All right, you ever have one of those things that happen where you get a video recorded, everything's looking good, you just gotta, you know, edit it down and such, and then the development kind of happens. It means you have to start over from scratch and do the whole thing again because that's what happened with this very machine here. This is a Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. Uh, not sure if you can tell from the side here, but pretty much this machine, well, not this one in particular, but another Quicksilver I have, because yes, now I have two of them. I got one, the first one from my friend Jack in Arizona when I went out to Arizona for a bit of a trip to kind of get my mind off the thing that I mentioned in the text posts here on YouTube. Whereas I had a bit of a catastrophic family emergency that thankfully turned out okay, so I was a little bit frazzled, and some friends were having a meetup, including Ryan, because you all know him. So pretty much I ended up just going out to Arizona to get my mind off things, and in the process, Jack actually went and got an MDD. So he said, well, I need to make room for it. And we made a deal, and I got his Quicksilver. And unfortunately, that thing, even though it still ran, had a few issues. Uh, the inside, as he said, every it had been underwater for a minute. Uh, thankfully, it missed most of the vital components, like the motherboard and power supply. But the chassis was starting to corrode, and it looked very gnarly. And after a few hours and some WD-40 and a lot of brushing, I was able to clean it up and make it look good again. There was still some rust here and there, like on the modem and such. Eventually, I got it looking pretty good and it got it up and running, and it was mostly set up to something I would consider good. And I had been talking with DOS Dude 1 a little bit on about what we can do to upgrade it, and... He said he could upgrade the CPU, but I'd also be better off just buying a dual CPU card for it, and then we could upgrade that when the time comes. Well, <laughs> kind of funny that all happened, because someone made a post on Reddit, I will put their username or try to remember to put it in the video around here, posted a thing saying, hey, I am in Oakland in the Bay Area, which is a couple hour drive from where I'm at, and... I'm going to have a Power Mac G4 and some other things to get rid of. And I said, hey, yo, if you still have the Quicksilver G4, I'd be willing to drive over to come get it. And he got back to me and said, hey, yeah, I'm. I, no one has spoken for the G4, so it's definitely yours if you want to come get it. So yesterday night, I drove over, went and got it, poked around in it, and well... One of the big problems that I was going to have finding a dual GPU card is now solved because this very G4, which is the one I picked up, has a dual CPU card in it. Very nice. He also had some extra stuff, so I picked up a Intel iMac first gen, uh, 14,6, and sadly, while I do want that thing to be awesome, it looks like it has some GPU issues. I'm letting it kind of have some time to sit and be merry and we'll see we'll come back to it but uh i reinstalled tiger onto it unfortunately it does seem to be having some gpu like it has some weird artifacting even in finder windows and such so i think unfortunately that thing is going to have some issues but that's not the point of this video we're talking about the g4 so let's go ahead and get around to the back which is going to be oh this thing is hefty so the other G4, the waterlogged G4, pretty much at this point is going to become a parts machine because this one, I mean, the chassis is a little more banged up like the plastics are, but otherwise this thing is in much better condition than the G4 I have. And we're going to actually have to bring in some parts from that G4 and kind of hope they work properly because we're gonna, we have some problems here. So... Here we are missing the modem because it is just hanging loose in there right now. Actually, the modem jack, the actual modem card is not present. We're missing all of our slot blanks, and you probably can't see it on camera, but the audio out port is destroyed. In fact, if I go over here and grab this little mini jack here, it doesn't even sit in there properly. It's just loose, like, so... <sighs> Yeah, unfortunately, this thing is going to need either a headphone jack swap or 
I'm gonna have to pull in the motherboard from the other G4 and hope that it works perfectly fine. The reason I say that is because the other motherboard, I don't know if part of it got hit in the damage and it just runs enough, but for one, if we turn this thing around, we can see the front of this beauty. We have a single speaker here and it's supposed to bong out the speaker, obviously, and the speaker is supposed to work. But for some reason, the internal audio on the other G4 does not work at all. It'll see the device, but nothing actually comes out the speaker. Furthermore, the power button doesn't light up at all. Well, it lights up when you first start the machine, but then it doesn't light up at all after that. So what I'm hoping is that's just a problem with the front panel maybe having seen water and that it'll be fine if I just transplant the motherboard in here because otherwise that means I'm gonna have to hot air the headphone jack off the old board and put it on this one. But we also have on the back Firewire USB 1.1 because all USB 2.0 Macs sadly cannot boot OS 9. So I don't really want that. That's really it for the, the ports. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. Make sure you guys get a nice view. And because we're filming on the bed, this thing is going to try and tilt back on me the minute I open this, so. A little bit. I could probably do with, like, oiling that up or something. Anyway, here's the motherboard. As you can see, this is a dual processor unit because it has a beefier heat sink and a heat warning on it. So I've only noticed these heat warnings on the dual processor models because... They do get very, very hot. <laughs> the little modem dangling around there. Phone jack, because the modem goes right here and it's gone. We have two hard drives in the back, as you can see, because I took the hard drive out of the other Quicksilver and just slapped it in here. We have the video card, which is a GeForce 2 MX Twin View, which is, I think, slightly beefier than the GeForce 2 MX that was in the other Quicksilver, because, as you can see, we have more RAM chips on the back, and because this has 64 megabytes of VRAM, rather than the 32 that is in the regular 2 MX. And as the name implies, it supports, I believe, 1080p out of both uh, display outs, Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Mac OS 9 cannot see that it can output the 1080p, so I have to scale it back a little bit, and sometimes my only VGA monitor gets a little angry about that, so not much I can do about that. From eBay, we have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. I was actually pretty shocked to go on eBay to find how cheap PC100 RAM is, or PC133 in this case, because... Given that it's vintage RAM, I was expecting it to be nasty overpriced, but no, I was able to pick up a gig of it for 20 bucks in 2.6, which is very, very nice. It's enough to top this thing out. And because of that, and because this thing actually came with RAM, because uh, for whatever reason, this had three 256 gigs or 256 megabyte sticks. And if I get those mixed up, I know, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I, I'm going to, but it had three 256 meg sticks in it, and for some reason it refused to acknowledge two of them. So I pulled them out and put them in my Power Mac G3, and it actually acknowledged all of them. So now my Power Mac G3 has one gig of RAM in it, which is quite nice. So win-win situation, um, I was able to just transplant the, all the memory here. But as you can see, if we just look up here, everything looks so much cleaner. Just, I... I'll try to show off the uh, other Quicksilver when I go to retrieve the motherboard from it, but this is just a mess in the other Quicksilver because we had some rust on this fan. This is like perfectly clean. I don't even see any dust on that fan, to be honest. I don't see much dust in here at all to begin with. I mean, there's a little bit on the CPU heat sink, but that's really about it. This machine is really clean, and I'm glad I got it, <laughs> even if the audio port's a little, uh, mangled. I assume what I can do, all else fails, is I can get an audio card for this thing at some point, but that's gonna be a very, very big undertaking, considering finding, I'd have to find something that's compatible with both OS 9 and OS 10, and that's kind of one of the big problems I'm having with the hard drives, because one of these is a 200 gigabyte hard drive, and as you may or may not know, 
these Power Macs, at least the older ones, only could address up to 128 gigs of hard drive space due to a limitation in the IDE controller. And the commonly accepted way around that is to get a Mac OS 9 compatible IDE controller or SATA controller if you're so lucky. Something that in fact Action Retro has done, I believe, with uh, his Power Mac G3. And the unfortunate thing is these cards are not easy to find and they are very expensive when you do. So again, given that I am not flush with money, I'm gonna have to just deal with it. So currently there is an 80 gig drive on the bottom here for, uh, that's for Mac OS 9. And then up top we have the 200 gig formatted as 128 for Mac OS 10. Now I know there is a utility called Speed Tools that allows you to use the full hard drive space even if you have to partition it out, but I tried to get that to work and unfortunately it just corrupted everything and I had to reload OS 10 from scratch. So maybe I'll attempt that a second time because really again this is like a hobby computer so I don't mind reloading OS 10 over and over again it's not that hard to set up but still it, i just didn't have very good luck with it so let's get this thing closed up and i guess go down to the other quicksilver to start getting the parts we're gonna need to go into this one and i'm hoping the cpus are just gonna be easily cross compatible so not to worry about that so much plus i have to remove the motherboard anyway because i'm gonna take the phone jack from the other quicksilver because it still has the mounting hardware and such even though the bottom of it rusted out due to the water exposure and it'll at least look a little bit nicer from the outside here's where that phone jack would come out and we actually have to remove the motherboard anyway to remove it which is a fun endeavor but thankfully i know how this comes out so i'm not terribly worried about <laughs> getting it all out so i ended up having to just pull this thing out from under my desk because i was gonna try and just pull the motherboard out well under my desk, but unfortunately, well, <laughs> um, due to me stealing the feet off this thing, uh, the door wouldn't open fully, so I kind of had to just bring it out anyway. But you can kind of see right there where <laughs> we have some of the corrosion happening, and you can see kind of towards the back there some of the water damage that has occurred. And there's no hard drive, and as you can see with the video card here, this is a regular 2MX with no twin view because we don't have any RAM chips on the back. All the RAM is gone, and we have a less beefy heat sink here, so... The cooling fan is also very noisy in this thing, too, so I'm not going to bother bringing that over. But as you can see, here's the modem, or what it's supposed to be, and there's... or the... I keep saying this is the modem. This is only the phone jack over here we have the actual modem and if i remember correctly where did i put that stupid thing here we go it's under the g4 conveniently but if i go ahead and plug this in doesn't dance around it makes a nice solid connection so yeah we do want this motherboard and we're going to put it in the other machine and just hope this all works perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera and just get this transferred over and get all the cursing out of the way off camera so YouTube doesn't come after me for that. I'll see you on the other side, I guess. Something that is, however, really annoying before we, you know, go off camera is the fact that you actually do have to remove the CPU. And the only way to remove the CPU is to get a screwdriver in here and pry these retaining clips off. I know there's probably a better way to do it, but it's the only way I have to hand at the moment. So I'm going to just quickly come in here with a screwdriver and thankfully I can pry outward so I don't actually risk of destroying something like I did on my xbox which sucked major when i did and thankfully that was only my 360 not my xbox one i decided to take that thing very seriously so i'm probably gonna have to do is actually remove the video card and go in at these clips but the reason we have to remove the cpu is because we have to remove the standoffs that these screws are in because those are holding the board to the back well funnily enough the default size actually works and for those of you screaming why don't you have one of these adapters well 
I forgot I did, and it was actually in that bag. So, hey, yeah, me having to empty the whole bag actually did something good. So I guess, well, these are actually now just these size, which is good, I guess. Now I have to get them out, which, yeah, these are a lot more standard, thankfully. Because on this G4, or the one you can't see out of frame, I actually have to use that bigger bit because this just doesn't fit on here. I swear if I go and do this on the other G4, and it turns out that this was sufficient the entire time, I'm going to be angry, and I'm going to feel stupid. So let's get those all out, and I believe we now have everything out that needs to be out for the board to now release. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the power, which arguably I should have done all this while the board was secure, but I'm not very smart. Ugh. Just slide this forward a slight amount. Yeah. Steady as she goes. This has hitched me up more than enough times. Ugh. Thankfully, it didn't fall apart that time. Because this shielding here likes to really trip you up a bit. But there's our motherboard. And let's see. There's the headphone jack that you guys really couldn't see. If I have to hot air that thing out, it looks like it's going to be a fun job, but nothing I haven't done before. So I guess let's go over and get the other Power Mac G4 over here. That got quite interesting, <laughs> funnily enough, because as I was taking out the motherboard from the waterlogged G4, I noticed that this chip right here had a lot of corrosion around it, and it looked like just, you know, uh, it looked a bit relatively minor, but it looked still a little bit alarming, so I took it off to the kitchen, got out my hot air station, and just fluxed everything up and gave it a nice run with the hot air and it's still drying out, so it may look a little bit splotchy still. I need to, like, clean this thing off real good. But, it's a little bit sticky from the flux residue. That stuff really does not want to come off. But, it looks a lot better now, as we can see here. If I can get some zoom going. Still a little bit, I mean, the pins don't look the greatest. But, at the very least, they look a lot better. And I'm a little more confident putting this in back into use. However... Should this fail, I guess I can just hot air the headphone jack off and move it to the board we know to work. What's interesting is these are the same board numbers as we can see here. The 820-1276A. But this is kind of a dark green color. I'll set that down gently. Whereas the board out of the Quicksilver I just got is green like a brighter green it's very interesting i mean obviously maybe there was a change for the dual cpu model i am noticing some changes in some of the chips here but yeah pretty neat for the most part what matters is the same i noticed this board is also a lot shinier than this one right here but yeah uh let's go ahead and let this thing dry out and put it back into service <sighs> All right, got it all in, all connected up. Now we're gonna put it to power and see if I've royally fried anything. Or if it even works, or if that problem with the speaker not doing anything is a problem with the motherboard, or with, hopefully, just the front panel on the old chassis. So, move you guys around a little bit, try to give you a good view here while I Go ahead and plug in the requisite connectors and let us hope that this all works because you guys are seeing this for the first time just like me right now all right here goes nothing
That is slightly unfortunate. It would look as if the front panel problem is down to that motherboard. However, the, looking at the monitor behind me, it is booting. So that's at least a good thing. Well, at least I have a gray screen. That's all I have is a gray screen. <laughs> Uh, nothing is coming up, so um, I'm gonna hit the reset button. That does actually respond. Oh, it is booting. I'm sure, you can hear the hard drive, but we do actually have something on screen. It's booting into Mac OS 9.2. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Saying the built in memory test has detected a problem, please contact a service technician for assistance. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, as we can see right there, I have it now pointed at the monitor that is playing host to this, and, uh, that's a problem. So I think what I'm gonna end up having to do here is actually hot airing the headphone jack, because I think this motherboard is just no good. Let me go ahead and connect the mouse and see what happens if I just click that little message. We do not have mouse. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this thing a reboot. I hear the optical drive fan going too, which is kind of interesting. And now we have mouse. Now we have this. Can I just proceed with the boot? Yes, I can. Interesting. I have never seen that message before. I'm wondering if I just need to reseat the modules, but it's already looking like this board's gonna uh, get its headphone jack taken because uh, if I go to control panels and let's let's just see how much memory this thing has. So let's go monitors first so I can make this big enough for both of us to see. Because I'm having to squint because I'm sitting pretty far back from the monitor right now. It's seeing two of the modules. One of them is not coming up so hmm interesting. I'm just going to shut this down because yeah I think this motherboard is just no no good. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and take this thing all down to pieces again and I'm gonna have to hot air the motherboard off or the uh the headphone jack which is gonna be fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it is actually the next day now. Um I'm also recording this segment not really knowing what the previous segment was but let, let's just Pretty much I had to like stop the video and really focus for a minute because I had to bust out the soldering equipment is I probably attested to it in the last video. But if I didn't, well, <laughs> I'm saying it now. Basically, what ended up happening to give you a quick recap is I put the motherboard and I believe I remember this part at least because I fell right asleep and uh, oh man, I'm just now waking up and realizing I should probably record this before uh, everybody gets home and everybody... The, there's a bunch of commotion and I can't record the rest of the video until later. Anyway, quick recap is I put the motherboard, this one here, from the waterlogged G4 into the new Quicksilver G4 that I got. And hoping that maybe touching up some of the joints because some of the water damage had gotten on this Broadcom chip here. It looks a lot better now, thankfully. And... Unfortunately, I, I mean, I know that Broadcom chip has nothing to do with the sound, but I figured cleaning up this area around here with some flux and hot air would make this board function normally again. Unfortunately, that did not happen. I put it into the G4, and as I believe the last video showed, nothing happened. Uh, it fired up just fine, but we had no sound out of the built-in speaker and also no power light, which is one of the things that I was trying to uh, fix. So no power light, no built-in speaker, but it still booted. Then we started having memory issues with known good RAM and it started saying that one of my modules was bad and it let me continue booting with the module disabled, which is a very interesting thing that the G4 can do, I guess, because most computers with bad RAM just won't even start, or blatantly bad RAM, I should say, but the G4 just kept trucking right on like nothing ever happened, so, I mean, I decided at that point I was going to pull the board back out and go to plan B, which plan B was remove the headphone jack from the water-damaged board and put it on the good board, because the good board had a headphone jack it had the pins in it, but the plastic little retention piece to keep the, you know, 
the jack in place uh, was gone, and so it would just wiggle endlessly in there and not actually work. So I had to take the headphone jack off this board and get it onto the other one, and I had to use my hot air station, and I, of course, burned myself doing it because I was kind of uh, getting kind of uh, nervous, and really you can't, you can't let that happen because once you start getting nervous and start getting... Uh, scared that you're going to break something then that's when inevitably you do break something thankfully i the only thing i broke was myself in this case i got the headphone jack off successfully and got it onto the new board perfectly fine with a little bit of effort but now we're all done everything is installed in the new chassis and by new i mean the one i you know got from reddit i still have to transfer the modem over but that's something i can do at a later time i'm not too worried about now but let's go ahead and turn to the power mac and start it right up all right we're totally doing this like windows uh 10 style with the slant here but uh yeah we're gonna be looking at this monitor which is one of my only ones with vga support left which uh, um given that i might be looking at some new monitors somewhat soon i'm undecided on that that's gonna really suck because I like just having the G4 under my desk and just connect it up to one of the spare inputs on my monitor. So I'm going to reach under my desk and turn the G4 on. And we should be able to hear the bong. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted. And you can't see it now. But the power light is remaining on. And this monitor should pick up the analog. There it goes. And now it's booting. Now, unfortunately, because I have just reinstalled everything on this G4, I don't have any of the software that I had in the previous iteration of this video to show off to you. But it's mostly just some old stuff that may or may not be interesting to you or you may not remember. But hear the hard drive going too, which is quite nice. So what a lot of what I did with my older Macs, because these Macs are very nostalgic for me because these were what I used when I was younger, uh, I didn't use a Quicksilver G4, obviously. My main Mac was a uh, 8100 and then a 9500. But I did lust after these machines like the Quicksilver and the Blue and White G3 quite a lot. And I really wanted those machines. So this kind of represents what I really, really wanted when I was younger. And it's really kind of nice. I do have a CD in here, but this is like... This is where I have all my OS updates for classic Mac OS versions going up to 10.4.11 because the Apple servers are probably going to go down at some point. Well, actually, it's, it's surprising. They still host updates for classic versions of Mac OS. Suck on that, Sony. Uh, because <laughs> famously, I had a Vio that I actually featured on this channel. And uh, getting drivers for that thing was a pain in the arse because, of course, Sony just deleted all their drivers for it. Unlike Dell, which I think still hosts drivers for old machines, which is very nice of them. Sony just kind of washed their hands of the Vio and was done with it. So here we have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. Virtual memory is off because when you have so much memory, do you really need virtual memory? Not really. Uh, because Mac OS 9 would be happy in like even 64 megabytes when we have 1.5 gigs. I would argue... 1.5 gigs for this thing back in 2001 it'd be like the 1.5 terabytes the 2019 mac pro can take now and we all think that's crazy but you know maybe 20 years down the line 1.5 terabytes is easy money to acquire and just slap in there like it ain't no thing so for mac os 9 this is vast overkill but we're also running 10.3.9 also, you may notice this little eject widget up here. This perplexed me for a little bit because this is what you need to open the tray in Mac OS 9. I kid you not. Because if I go and hold the F12 key, which is normally what you'd use on a PC keyboard to eject the tray, Mac OS 9 just helpfully gets in your way. So you need to double click this to open the tray. And if even if there's a disc in there, it'll open the tray. How nice. Because and what, why this sucks is because this is not a utility that comes with the machine. You actually have to go, and I actually have the CD extras copied from the CD, the Mac OS 9 CD, and it's in there under eject extras. And I believe there's also a control strip, strip module that you can install too. But the fact that they don't just install this on the machine with Mac OS 9 just perplexes me. Because unless you do, you have to hope you have Mac OS 10 installed so you can boot into OS 10 and then use the F12 key to open the tray. It's really bass backwards, but I figure I have so much room on here. Why the hell not just 
throw it all on here and have it. The other thing that really perplexes me is the Apple CD audio player is also on the CD. But why that perplexes me is because if you pop in an audio CD, it just starts playing automatically and you have no way of controlling it. And there's nothing on the actual computer that will allow you to control the CD drive in that case. It's on the Mac OS 9 CD, which is why that they didn't why they didn't put this on the machine to begin with, I don't get. Because like we'll just issue a command I here. This is 200k like is it really gonna cost that much hard drive space to just throw it on there i don't know and this is just with the defaults by the way like i just put in my mac os 9 disk and just let it go with the defaults for installation if there is something you have to check to install this stuff it's kind of dumb that they put it behind an opt-in because this is also back when iTunes was yet to release, I believe. So you didn't have any kind of media player on this machine at all. Really kind of dumb. But let's see, internal USB modem read was, is this for the, I think this is for the, the G3s and G4s. I could be wrong. What route? I'm not sure what that is supposed to be for, but I just copied everything over because I just want to have this stuff. It's kind of like copying like the Windows 98 CD to your machine because for whatever reason windows 98 loves to require the cd to you know add or remove features from windows uh for whatever reason it's stupid how some of the features just aren't included but i guess at the time maybe they were thinking of people with uh like four gigabyte hard drives or something but just something so essential to the computer just doesn't seem like a good idea to leave out uh there's file sharing stuff i'm not sure what this is for oh personal firewall interesting and yeah apple printer utility additional printer drivers oh those are for, those are some old ones right there more help you know since we have sound now we gotta do the, the thing we have to do the thing the thing that pisses off some people quite a bit we have to throw on desktop sounds And I guess let's set this up like I would have had my old Mac set up. I'm not sure why, but this is like my favorite desktop background of the time. Um, let's see, what background do we want on this? Let's give it lollipop, just regular lollipop appearance. Let's azul. Uh, turquoise. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. One of my friends had sand for a bit, and it was uh, an interesting experience. I love that we can have uh, capitals, which is a very interesting font, but we'll leave it at charcoal because I am boring. I love that we can turn off fonts and everything. I prefer to just leave that on. I know some purists like to leave it off, but I just prefer to leave it on. So let's go ahead and restart. We should be able to see our custom background as it boots. Also, I've realized this video is gonna be gigantic. Well, YouTube likes those kinds of videos. So you know what? Hopefully you do too. But now as we boot, we should get our, our background boot behind the Mac OS 9 boot. See, we have Lollipop there in the background. See what resolutions we have available to us. So I believe I said uh, we can go up to 1600 by 1200. And yeah, we're pretty much just stuck to 16 by 9. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go here. Just leave it here. Because uh, I'm looking at this without my glasses. And my eyesight appreciates the bigger stuff. Too lazy to put on my glasses. <laughs> Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's, I mean, we can look at Apple System Profiler real quick to see what she's got. PowerPC G4, dual processor 800, as we saw before. Thinks it's an Apple extended keyboard, which is cute. I actually have one, but uh, I'm not going to hook it up to this. PC 133, 1.5 gigs. Uh, devices, which shows us everything. We have Firewire, and what... Okay, so cool thing about this too is if I can find where I put it. Now, you may know from my channel, obviously, that I am really into iPods and working on them and such. So if you have one of these fourth gens here, these are actually invaluable if you have a FireWire cable because it's, it makes it a lot faster 
to move files on and off these machines because you can connect this via Firewire to this machine and via USB 2.0 to a Windows machine. It makes it really, really nice. The only thing is in OS 9, it doesn't know what the hell an iPod is, so it's going to just throw up its arms and be like, what is this? But for Mac OS 10, it does know what an iPod is, and this will work great for that. So if you need a like simple just disk to ferry between a Mac and a Windows machine, this is it. This works so good for that, as I've found. The only problem is you need to find a Firewire cable, which those are getting a little bit hard to find and expensive. But if you have a Firewire cable, invaluable way of transferring data between these Macs and your Windows machine. Especially in this case, because this is a 128 gig modded iPod. And because it's a fourth gen, it works perfectly fine with Firewire, even when modded. The third gens can do it too, but if you flash mod them, you lose Firewire capabilities. We can see, oh, <laughs> It actually sees this is a Dell USB keyboard. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's what I am actually am using here. Uh, we have our two hard drives, because I do have OS 9 and OS 10 on two separate drives for dual boot. I mean, you could still dual boot them off a single volume, but again, as I've probably mentioned before, this Quicksilver is a 2001. So, you are limited to 128 gigs per drive. Really kind of sucks, but that is, it is what it is. We have our... NVIDIA GeForce 2. This is a GeForce 2 MX twin view, as we can see. I'm sure I've showed this off before, but it is slightly beefier than the original uh, 2 MX because we have double the VRAM for the dual monitors. I don't plan on using the dual monitors, so it really doesn't matter. So that extra VRAM is just, I guess, nice to have. It would be nice to put a, a real, like, GeForce in here, but unfortunately... Video cards on this thing are probably not going to be cheap, and I will have to just kind of play by ear on getting another one. Anyway, that's really it for this video. Not really much else to see. So, hopefully you liked, and I'm sorry the video got so long, but I really want to just do a really big, good video on this machine, because I love this machine to death, even if it burned my finger in the process of repairing it. So, that's it. I'll see you all later.